I think this is going to be fun, not necessarily fun today, but in the future, this is the first one we're doing. I've, I've always been curious about other people's shacks and, you know, what kind of gear they've got and what their operating position looks like. And, uh, antennas of course fascinate me. And, uh, so this is the first one of these, uh, Jack is committed to doing it Ed is committed to doing it. And both of them have much more impressive stations than I've got. Cause I, uh, my, my greatest joy in ham radio is to take a little battery powered radio out in the field and put a wire antenna up on a fiberglass mast or in a tree. And so, um, that's what I really love. And so I've got a number of little battery powered radios and a number of wire antennas, but, uh, my, my shack itself, isn't that, isn't that awesome? But anyway, hopefully this will be a, a good start to kind of kick off these monthly tours. And, uh, um, maybe I'm doing something here that uh, is interesting to a newbie who doesn't have an HF station yet. Uh, so we'll see, but uh, here's what I thought we might do. I want to show you where I live and uh, my antenna lim limitations. I want to show you my, my HF antenna and, and how that gets into the house and connects to my radio or radios. And then I want to show you my office and where I'm working from. So you have some idea of how my gear is organized and um, what I'm doing for a power supply and how I'm, you know, getting that uh, stuff set up. Um, and then I, I want to end uh, finally by just talking about what I like about my shack and then what things I would like to improve upon. Um, so let's just get going. And uh, I live uh, in a subdivision called McKay's mill. It's, to the right here, east of I-65, uh, off of Liberty Pike. And it's a big neighborhood. So uh, there are uh, a lot of houses here. You can see hundreds of houses. And of course, that means, you know, plasma TVs and people on their treadmills and things like that. So I do have a fair amount of noise uh, in, in, in here, like, like most of us do, unfortunately, these days. This house uh, is my house that's inside the the square here. Um, you can see that I've got a big tree that's pretty close to the house. I have to trim it back every year to keep the branches from actually hitting the house, unfortunately. Although it's kind of neat when I look out the, the window, there's this nice tree right there. Uh, so because of my situation, I don't have a nice tree that's set back from the house that I can run a wire from uh, this these windows up here. This is where I'm sitting right now. This is my office on the upstairs back of the house. Um, so what I did, because I'm limited in what I can do, I put up a vertical antenna uh, and that's what, that's what you see right here. There's some uh, stone kind of paper things that are around the antenna and there's a vertical that's just running right here. And that's really the only antenna I can have. And, and by the way, I went ahead and put it up. I have an HOA situation, uh, obviously. I put up the antenna knowing they were probably going to make me take it down. But uh, they did come around about 30 days later and told me I needed to take it down. And I wrote a letter to the HOA and uh, told them I would take it down, absolutely. But that I was a WCARES member and I might be the only person in the neighborhood that can get out to the, to the world if we had a disaster. And, and asked that they would just let me keep the slender aluminum pole. And to my surprise, they said, sure, keep it. So this is what it looks like. Um, you can see these, these stones to protect the, the antenna from the lawnmower. And uh, it's a vertical, it's a Hustler uh, four band vertical that I've included some extra things. There's a little bolt on thing here for 17 meters. Uh, there's an 80 meter extension up here. Uh, so this antenna actually does 10 meters, 15 meters, 20 meters, well, 17 also, 20, uh, 30 meters, 40 meters and 80 meters. Uh, so it does uh, six or seven bands and uh, one, uh, let's see, I got a slide here. Uh, I started by just setting a pipe in cement there. You can see the cap, uh, like a galvanized steel pipe right here. I just dug a hole about two feet deep, poured a bag of concrete in there or cement, filled it with water, stirred the thing up and uh, set this pipe in cement and then I've got this, this is the antenna, of course, and I bought some DX engineering uh, stuff to help me. 
So I've got this, this tilt over mount right here. And I'll show you the back side of this in just a second. Uh, and I've got this uh, base plate, this radio plate right here that allows me to connect uh, wires uh, to the antenna for my ground system. Um, here's the other side of that. So you can see this uh, tilt over mount. You can loosen these four knobs and then pull up on the antenna to clear the top of it and then rotate the antenna around. So I'll take a ladder and pull the antenna up and over and set it on a ladder so that I can do any kind of maintenance I want to do, if, if any. But it's been very maintenance free. I've had a, a couple of the traps. Uh, it is a trap vertical. So uh, a couple of the traps over time have gotten some weather in there and I've had to replace them, which is no big deal. But um, uh, one thing I want you to see here is that on the base plate, this is a stainless steel base plate, I've got 40 radials buried in the ground. And this was a pain and it was overkill. You know, if I had to do this over again, knowing what I know now, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have taken all weekend to uh, dig a little trench for all these wires. First of all, that was unnecessary. I could have just staked them down and, uh, and the grass would have grown over them and, care and covered them up. But anyway, I do have, this antenna actually works great. And I'm, I'm really happy with it. I've worked DX all over the place with it. And maybe the 40 radials uh, make a difference. Uh, but I, I feel like I could do I could do less, and that would still be okay. This is how I get the coax out of the ground. Uh, I did uh, you know dig a little trench, and I, I've got direct burial cable, so the jacket is okay to be in the soil uh, without deteriorating. But to protect the coax coming out of the ground from a weed eater, I just use this little PVC solution. So that's how the coax comes out of the ground next to my patio. Uh, up to the second floor, uh, I've got this MFJ4602 feed-through panel uh, that you see right here. And the way this comes is you've got this, this metal uh, section right here and a long piece of wood that you cut off to whatever dimensions you need. And once you cut that off at the right spot, you can close your window on it. This is from inside my office looking down at the ground. So you can see... Um, I've got the coax on the other side. I've actually got some rubberized uh, coax sealant, which will be degraded by UV light. So I've got that sealant wrapped in electrical tape to keep that from breaking down. So uh, there's the foam insulation that you close the window down on. This is what it looks like. Uh, but you can see I've got three coax entry points here and then uh, some places for, for just you know, wires or you know, ladder line and then ground. I do not have a ground system. I'm on the second floor, a little complicated to do that, but I would, I would like to do something about that. That's on my wish list. So inside my house, my, my, my office, then I've got this cable that comes to my coax switch on the side of my little desk. And I'm kind of using this backwards. Most people would have a radio and switch between multiple antennas. Because I only have one antenna, I'm switching multiple radios to my single antenna. So it's a little different than what most people would do. All right, so I've only got the one HF antenna at home, and I've already told you that I like working portable. So you think maybe I might have a wire antenna? Yes, I have mucho wire antennas. Uh, they are all of these. I'm not going to list them all, but you can see I've got you know some commercial antennas, and then I've got quite a few homebrew things that I've done. Um, I love these soda beams antennas. They, you know, they're in this, you know, nice package and you can uh, carry them easily into the field, but you know, you can't have too many antennas. As a matter of fact, I've got all the parts to make more antennas. I've got all of this wire that I bought from soda beams and then the silky wire that I got from the wireman. I've got a bunch of wire winders and then the pouches that I bought from soda beams, uh, just various things. And so I, I think most of us probably uh, sooner or later, you're going to go through a phase where you are really into antennas and making antennas. And I've been through that phase. I might go back to it again, but uh, I've just kind of standardized now on just a dipole in the field. So if you see me working portable, you're probably going to see me using a soda beams linked dipole. Uh, and that works about as good as anything. And I've got, you know, contacts from, 
5,000 miles away, just using five Watts and a link dipole. So, um, I really, I really do think antennas are, are, are interesting. And, um, if you haven't been through that phase where you make a bunch of them, I think you're going to. So this is my office. So it's kind of divided into three areas. I've got where I work all day and I've been working from home here for 12 years. Um, so COVID really isn't making much of a difference <laughs> in my, in my work day. But, uh, so I've got my work area on the left here, my little ham desk in the center, and then uh, where I play with music on the right side here. But you can see that my desk is pretty small. And um, I try to keep everything really compact and tight on that because I'm sort of a hoarder. And I would probably, if I had a, if I had a big desk, I would probably fill it and it would look like my uh, office desk looks right here. You can see all this paperwork and stuff I need to file. And I'm, I'm not the neatest of, uh, of guys. Um, you do see, I do have a Geochron um, digital uh, you know, map over here on the side. Uh, this TV uh, has an Apple 4K TV connected to it so that I can use it with my Mac as a third monitor if I want to. I've also got this Geochron connected to the second HDMI input. And there's a third HDMI input that I've got with a, a, a Google Chromecast. So for many of my computers or my iPad or whatever, I can cast whatever I'm looking at in my Chrome web browser onto this screen. So it's a pretty versatile, versatile setup. Um, when I'm doing ham my hamming, you know, I've got this interface, uh, this, this is my world just on whatever fits on this desk. Um, this was a contest that I was doing four years ago and I took this picture for a video that I made for YouTube. Um, uh, the two radios that are always on this desk are my Flex 6300, which is my quote unquote best radio. Uh, it's no longer in production. It's the bottom of the line of the Flex series radios, but it's still you know, better than I deserve and, and better than, you know, uh, than I need for what I do. I've also got this kind of old FT897 uh, that I use for uh, mostly VHF, UHF, even though it is connected to my HF antenna and I can do Morse code or whatever I want with it. Um, this is an old radio, uh, still, in, still being made as far as I know, maybe not, but uh, I bought this a long time ago when I joined WCARES thinking that Okay, it'd be good to have this radio because it's got a battery pack and I can use it in the field. So it's kind of a do it all, you know, HF, VHF, UHF radio. Uh, but, you know, it's sort of like, you know, when you get a motorcycle, you, you, if you can only have one motorcycle, it might be this kind of motorcycle. But if you could have seven of them, you know, they would all be good for a different thing. So this radio was really good as like a, a good kind of first radio that would let me take it on an emergency, like with a W care deployment or something. But it's not a great radio if it's your only radio, you know, so there, there are other radios out there to be had. But these two are always on my desk, and uh, I will almost always have another radio, a QRP radio sitting right here where these guys are. Uh, this is what field day looked like. I just I loaded up the software again. I don't have my battery sitting here that I was running my station on. But I was got my uh, Microsoft Surface Pro uh, 3 here uh, in the dock. That's what N3FJP was running on. And then it's a dual monitor system. So I've got my second monitor and I was running the WCARES live output here and then the chat room stuff here. So uh, it was a pretty, pretty comfortable setup and uh, it, you know, it works well. So one of these guys is, is something that's always on my desk right now. I've got my, uh, my KX3 uh, set up, but uh, I took this picture last night of the, of the radios that I can take out into the field or just play here at home with. Now, underneath my desk, you couldn't see that from the other picture, but my power supply is here. And I've got a couple of other power supplies just sitting here in boxes that I use when I go, uh, you know, supply a station at field day or, or whatever. I'll take a, you know, one of these supplies, or if I go on vacation and I want to take a hundred Watts with me, I'll take one of these compact power supplies. But, this is where I get power, and then I've got my QRP radios sitting in cases underneath here uh, out of the way. And so when I, I get power out of this power supply, and I run it into this power gate, um, which uh, will charge a battery while it's supplying power to your rig runner or whatever your power distribution is. So I've got a battery connected to the power gate that's being charged all the time, and then I've got 
the other cable coming out to my rig runner. And if the power goes out, the power gate automatically starts getting battery power from the battery that's under charge. So I can have a power outage and still work with my radios. Um, so that, that works really well. And you can see I've got my rig runner here. And there's a cable right here that's running to the power supply over there through the power gate. So this is where I connect my radios uh, to power them. You can see an Ethernet cable hanging here that's in the back of the flex. That is how you connect the flex to a radio to run the software. Um, I do have some other stuff. I've got a couple of solar panels. I bought this kind of smaller one than I wanted a bigger one. Um, I've got tons of Anderson power pole cables, um, everything from just, you know, straight cables to here's some that Trey Spain made a couple years ago when we were running off of battery power in the EOC. These are all Anderson power pole on one side and then alligator clips on the other side to connect to, uh, to batteries. I've got another version of it here where I've got some alligator clips thinking in an emergency, I could just, you know, steal my wife's car battery. And, uh, you know, always have a battery. As long as I can steal batteries from cars, I would always be able to power my, my gear with that. Got a couple of inverters here. This is my lithium ion nine amp hour battery that I used to take with me when I'm uh, wanting to work more than just a few hours. Power poles for making things. This is a, a battery booster. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with like trying to run 100 watts in the field, as soon as you key the mic, the voltage drops on your battery. So, um, this battery booster will take your, you know, 12 volt battery and boost it up so that the current stays where you need it. So you can get the full hundred Watts or whatever you're trying to run from your, your big 12 volt battery. A few little power distribution things here, uh, more cables. Here's, here's one where it's Anderson power pole on one side and then USB on the other side. So you can charge devices from, uh, from Anderson power poles. Anyway, so, uh, that's, that's uh, some stuff I use in the field and, and things that use Anderson power poles. All of my gear uses Anderson power poles. Um, now I did not put a slide together about my UHF VHF stuff. Matter of fact, if I go back to this, this picture here, you can see there's a filing cabinet in the corner and on that filing cabinet is a UHF VHF antenna. And there's a smaller one sitting right next to it. That antenna is actually what I use when I check into the net. And I used to, I used to call the net every now and then. And so this is all I've got um, for VHF, UHF antenna, which is, which is sad. Uh, one of my things, I would love to have a, an outdoor VHF, UHF antenna. I've just never done that. Um, one of these days when you get back to normal, I might ask the antenna crew to help me with that. But um, that's that. So uh, what do I like about my shack? You know, because I'm a QRP nerd, having this compact station suits me just fine. I don't, I don't, even though I, I really love the look of a, a big, you know, fancy station, like some other hams here in WCARES have, have uh, this little thing works fine for me. So I'm happy with that. Um, I like that my ham shack is integrated with my work and my music stuff so that I have all my hobbies and work just right here with me all the time. Uh, I do have my MacBook and two large monitors to my left. So if I want to run uh, reverse beacon or something like that, if I want to run some other ham software from my Mac, I can do that and have a couple of big monitors right next to me. That I can glance over at. Uh, I do like that TV that's on my wall that I can use Geocron with or, or cast something to that. Um, there's enough space on my desk in the front. I don't, I don't use a notepad or anything. I've got a keyboard drawer under there. And if I'm like uh, doing something where I need to write something down, I don't write it down. I just open notepad and windows and type it in. I'm just, I'm a computer person for a living. So typing, um, you know, is perfectly fine with me. So I do have desk area there at the front of the desk for uh, another, you know, QRP radio or things like that. So I've always got a QRP radio sitting there. I'll just, you know, might not be the same one from week to week, but um, that's okay. The last thing I listed here is that this computer desk and actually all of the all of the things in my office, all three of these are all on casters. And it makes it really easy just to roll these things out and get back behind them and do something, you know, with cabling um, 
or move them out of the way if I need to do, if I want to do something else uh, with this area, I can just slide these things actually back where the camera position is here and have a, a bigger place where I can meet with people or whatever. So that works pretty well. As far as what I would like to improve, my Surface Pro 3 now is four generations old. It's a little underpowered. It still works. I still use it for field day. I've supplied a second CW station, uh, you know, running the Flex software and N3FJP off of this little Surface Pro 3. And it works, it works fine. It's just a little underpowered and it's six years old, maybe kind of time to think about getting a little more beefy uh, ham, ham computer. Uh, would love to have an external VHF UHF antenna. I'm a little nervous if I have to admit it that if I put up another antenna that the HOA might say something, but given that I've already got this vertical out back, they might not even realize that I didn't have this external VHF UHF antenna before and might not say anything. I don't have any station grounding and I'm not sure to be honest with you if it would make a difference at all. Uh, I don't have any problems with, uh, you know, getting shocked if I touch something metal. The, the RF energy doesn't seem to be coming back uh, into my coax, into the back of my, my gear. Maybe it's because of that common mode choke that you saw out there by my antenna. You saw the PVC pipe form with coax wrapped around it a bunch of times. That might be helping. But anyway, I'm not sure if the grounding would actually make a difference or not. I know Doug Miller doesn't have any grounding in his second floor hem shack either. Um, and, and I guess the last thing on my list here is my old long in the tooth, you know, FT897 probably needs to be, you know, given away or done something with and just replace it with a more modern VHF, UHF radio. So I'm going to stop sharing and see if anybody has any questions about or suggestions for my setup or anything like that.